InterSystem's Iris data platform developers can now use VS Code to develop and manage code. This video demonstrates how to use the VS Code debugger for object script code. Debuggers allow developers to step through code on a line-by-line -line basis. Developers can verify expected behavior and search for the cause of unexpected behavior. A debugger attaches to a target process. Users submit commands such as run, break, or stop which the debugger forwards to control the target process. The debugger monitors the state of the process and gives that information back to the user. In the context of InterSystems Iris, a process runs on the InterSystems Iris server while a debugger communicates via a standard debugging API. Debuggers can launch a new process like a class method or attach to an existing process like a production component. Let's see how to initiate a debug session between the VS Code debugger and an InterSystems Iris class method or process. Before you begin, ensure you have the InterSystems Object Script extension pack installed and an active Object Script connection. First, write a debugger launch configuration. Launch configurations are persistent definitions of debugging environments and targets. They are helpful in collaborative projects because they can be shared. You can have multiple launch configurations defined, each connected to a different process, including processes that run on separate servers. To create the launch configuration, click the debugger icon, then click the link to create a launch.json file. At the top of the screen, select Object Script Debug as the environment. The launch.json file includes a default configuration. In each configuration, the type attribute tells the debugger which language is being debugged. In this case, it is object script. The request attribute, set to launch, tells the debugger to launch a new InterSystems Iris process. Give your debug configuration a useful name by entering it after the name attribute. Add an attribute called program, which specifies the method that the debugger will call. It should follow the pound pound class syntax and include method arguments. If you need to use a string argument, Use a backslash as the escape character for quotation marks. Save the launch.json file. Then select the configuration name from the debug drop-down menu and click Run next to this menu to start a debug session. Now that you've seen how to make a debug configuration and launch a debug session, let's take a look at a simpler way to start a debug session used with class methods. Above each class method declaration, you should see a button that says Debug this method. When you click that button, you'll be prompted to submit method arguments. A debug session starts without a launch configuration. Once it starts, VS Code shows the debugger interface. Use the debugger like any other, setting breakpoints, stepping through code, and watching variables. In VS Code, buttons to step through the code are located at the top center of the screen by default. Add and remove breakpoints by clicking the empty space left of the row numbers. The variables displayed on the left will update as code executes and changes their values. Double-click a variable to change its value manually and observe the effect on the running code. If a variable is an object script object, then its properties and values are displayed in the variables pane. Expand objects, arrays, and collections to see their properties and contents. In the Watch section on the left, enter any valid object script expression to see how the expression evaluates while your code executes. Objects and lists in the watch pane are also expandable. Open the debug console in the view menu to watch for console output and evaluate expressions in the context of the debugged process. Next, let's see how to debug a production component which involves attaching the debugger to a running process rather than launching a new one. First, make sure your production is running by checking its status in the management portal. Returning to the VS Code debugger, make a new launch configuration. This time, set the request attribute to attach instead of launch. Instead of the program attribute, add the process ID attribute, since you are attaching to an existing process with a known ID. Rather than specifying an actual ID, set the value of process ID to dollar sign open curly bracket command colon pick process close curly bracket and save the file. When you initiate the debug session, you will be prompted to pick a process by ID. Back in the Management Portal, navigate to the Production Configuration page and select the production component you're debugging, such as a business process. Click the Jobs tab on the right to locate the process ID of the component. 
In the VS Code Debugger view, run your configuration and provide the process ID at the top of the screen to begin debugging the component. Production components typically require an input message before they can execute code. Set breakpoints that trigger once the message is sent, then send a message to the component. Exact behavior will depend on the component in question, for example, triggering a service endpoint like in this demo. While debugging object script, you can step into most methods to see source code. Some system methods may only exist as executable OBJ code with no human readable version. When the debugger is debugging an OBJ method, the debugger cannot show the code as you step. Instead, it may appear to highlight the first line of the previous file in the call stack rather than opening the unreadable OBJ file. It may be useful to step through the OBJ method and watch your variables update. If that isn't useful, simply step out and return to the previous point in the call stack. Now that you have seen the different parts of the VS Code debugger and how to debug a class method, a production component, and executable code, Try it yourself or visit the InterSystems documentation website for more detailed information on debugging ObjectScript.